especially a web developer. That's the one that kills me. I get it if you're in a better developer, you don't deal with HTTP, fine, no problem. But if you are a web developer, not knowing what your basic protocol is, come on, man. That's just embarrassing. It's always amazing to me how in a technical interview, how many people don't know what ports are, how many people don't know how to resolve example.com into an IP address or have any idea how that works, which is crazy because I've hit so many problems where DNS is the problem, outages and, and slowdowns. So it's really important knowledge or my pet peeve is that people do not know what an HTTP request looks like. They have no idea. You're like, well, what's a web re an HTTP request? Like uh, some text that goes over the wire. Good. What are components of it? And if they, they don't even know that there's headers and a body, let alone what are popular headers, let alone how caching works, let alone e tags, let alone all these things, content negotiation, you should at least know that there is an HTTP headers. There are headers and there is a body. Um, it kills me. That's, that's, I don't have too many of the, like, you don't know this. I'm going to say no type answers, but that's about as close as I have, especially a web developer. That's the one that kills me. I get it. If you're in a better, the better developer, you don't deal with HTTP fine. No problem. But if you were a web developer, not knowing what your basic protocol is, come on, man, that's just embarrassing. Definitely know how to use a console in your browser. Yep. Yep, that's a good one. Um, it's actually, and actually, I, I can't really shit on people for this, but not knowing how to do breakpoint debugging. I didn't actually really know it before I joined Atlassian. And I'd been in the industry for about six or seven years by that point, because I was always using like uh, editors, text editors like Vim or something like that. And so I never really learned PDB or any of those, but man, once you learn step through debugging, cool, that really opens up all kinds of productivity or, you know, strip through debugging in the, in the browser nowadays. I mean, that stuff is, I use that all the time. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Hiring is such a, such an interesting thing though. One anti pattern I see of hiring is where people, you get a senior mid to senior dev in that interview and they ask the hardest questions that they could think of because they want to feel better about themselves. That is such a waste of time. The company's time, it's a waste of hiring time, it's a candidate's time, and it just hurts the company in the end. But it's so easy to do, and I've done it myself. We are like, oh, how does this work? Well, I know because I have the answer, and I'm going to look down on you because you don't know the answer. But I guarantee you, if I had, if someone asked me, you know, yesterday what it was, I wouldn't have known. It's so much easier to pass a test when you have the answers in front of you. Problem with those kind of knowledge gotcha based type interviews. I asked some question about civic tech. They say they know how they'd solve a problem, what they're working on their free time, what they want to work on. Those are really good ones. Those are good ones. That is kind of one of my favorite things to do is like, tell me something you know so much more about than I do. I don't give a shit. It can even be non-code related. I just want to know and I want to ask you questions and I want to see how you talk to me about them. That can be very fascinating because if there's someone who gets annoyed when you ask the wrong question or tells them the wrong in some way, that's kind of a sign of how they're going to be to work with. So it's not even so much that I care what they know. It's I care how they deal with that knowledge because few things are worse than a know-it-all developer who just shuts people down left, right, and center because they just know it and you're all wrong. So unproductive, so counterproductive, if not toxic in a team. We have this thing that is one of my favorite things to do and it's called the drill down. Uh, it's, it's, it wasn't my idea. This is something that Atlassian did for, for years. I think it still does. I think the old timers do it. I don't know if it's in the new hiring plan, but anyways, long story short, I'm not, I'm not going to give you the whole thing. The whole drill down is like an hour long exercise, depending on the person could be longer, could be shorter. But the basic idea is you ask them to, uh, describe what happens when a user hits submit on say a login form. And then uh, the, the, the person is determined to be logged into the database, into the application. What happens between point A and point B? And that's it, that, that's the question. The trick is you need to give it your answer in as much detail as you possibly can. And no matter how much detail you give me, I will ask, and how does that work? And how does that work? And I'll keep asking it. 
if you can get down to, well, an ethernet packet is structured like this. And how does that work? Well, there's a header and then there's this part and there's a checksum. And how does that work? Well, a checksum is, and you just keep asking deeper, 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 deeper. Now, the reason why I enjoy it so much is not because I show off my knowledge because they know more about this money, the things than I do. The reason why I really enjoy it is because you get to see what it's like when the person doesn't know the answer. And it's fascinating to see how people respond. Some people are just like, oh, I don't know. And you're like, cool, I don't know either. I just asked the question, let's talk about something else. But some people just get mad. Some people like, how would you ever ask me that? That never comes out. That's just a ridiculous question, uh, which I find really interesting because in working with somebody in a pairing environment and a team environment, you're going to come across stuff you don't know all the damn time. You're going to be do something and that has an unintended consequence that brought the system down. And yeah, you didn't know. And yes, there was no way for you to know. But how do you deal with that that moment? Do you panic? Do you get angry? Do you get defensive? Do you quit? Or do you work collaboratively and say, yeah, I don't know, but let's figure it out because it's the latter type of people that I want to work with. I don't want to work with even the person has all the answers. I don't want to work with that person. If they don't know how to admit that they're wrong, they don't know how to admit they don't know, and they don't know how to work together with somebody to find an answer. Cause that I find is that plus passion and a couple other things are some of the key ingredients in a good developer is someone who's able to admit that they don't know, but go find out, be genuinely interested in the answer uh, and wanna, wanna be a team on it and not be, you know, again, not be defensive, not be aggressive. It's fascinating, it's super interesting and it's a way to kind of test a little bit of their personality beyond just their technical knowledge, which, you know, some, and it's also something that's great for the people that come into an interview with a script. Like they're like, I'm gonna go through these 10 things and I'm gonna show you how awesome I am and I have speeches rehearsed. I had one dude who kept trying to pull out a laptop to show me his PowerPoint. I wanna throw those people off because I wanna see who they actually are, not how well they present, which is interesting, but but not always. Uh, is it fucking evil? It's not fucking evil. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. How do you, do you need to go before you feel comfortable with the candidate? Uh, how deep? It's, it's, so we just kind of go through it. And, and what happens is you'll go to like, like, let's say they say, oh, we send the data over the over the wire. How does that work? Uh, well, we, we get their IP address and we send it. How does that work? Well, that's DNS. Okay, great. So I take this domain name and I resolve it to an IP address. Great. How does that work? Oh, okay. Well, I take this domain and I call uh, a library on my machine, which hits my DNS client and it resolves it. Great. How does that work? Well, uh, okay. It, it has a cache of its last known addresses. And if it's not in that cache, then it'll go up to another server and so on. Okay. How does that work? Well, okay. So the internet provider gives you an IP you know, and you just go on and on and on. But again, eventually they will always say, I don't know. And you say, cool. Yeah. I don't know either. Um, let's talk about, but how does this work? And let's go into something else. Uh, it's interesting because again, I think the, the good developers are ones that you want to be a partner with. It's not the ones that know everything. And I think that's where people get wrong. They always say, what are some YouTubers that I can follow or books that I can read or some knowledge I can gain to be a good developer? And yes, that is a component, but I would say the biggest component is how you work as a team. Are you humble? Are you arrogant? Are you passionate? Are you curious? Are you complacent? Are you lazy? Are you a workaholic? Um, and and those aren't necessarily good and bad in that particular case, I'd say both are bad, but it's understanding that and how well you work with a group. Cause it's really the team that accomplishes something. Rarely is it a single person that can just do all the things. <laughs> Let's walk over to your desk and Google that. Yes, Google does have the answers, but you don't always have Google around. And actually that's actually another interesting one, which I don't really have a good way to test, which is how good are they at Googling? Because that can be a huge skill. I use it all the damn time to know how to Google a certain problem or an error message or um, an architecture question I'm having. Google usually gives the results, but you need to be able to ask it the right question, which is interesting. The ability to ask the right question is more important than having the right answer. Um, we had a thing that we would also, I think it was even a separate interview at Atlassian. It was called looking for the product gene. And by product gene, what they meant was you're looking for somebody who understands that this is not just a programming exercise, a fun puzzle, 
but this is we're trying to create something for other people to find value out of it and how good are they at a understanding that and b orienting themselves so they're constantly looking for ways to deliver more value to the customer the idea is separating people who just see them as problems and people who want to see them as customer problems i would say a better way to put it is empathy empathy is one of the most important if not maybe even the most important characteristic for a good developer is to have empathy and empathy isn't sympathy sympathy is oh i'm sorry that the customer has this problem that sucks i guess we could do something about it empathy is different empathy is feeling the pain of the customer as if it is your own it's where you look at something and you're like this is hard for the customer that physically pains me that bugs me i need to fix it if you have customer empathy you are able to be so much more effective in delivering value and creating a good product uh, than, a, than if you just see them all as abstract programming puzzles. So yes, I think what I would say is you want to find people who have empathy. Now, not everybody has a product gene. In fact, some of the best developers I've ever worked with do not have the product gene. They just love puzzles and they love challenges and they don't you know, really give a shit if it has any product applicability. Applica applicability? Applicity. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Whatever. One of those. Um, but some people do have the product gene, and that can be really useful. People who look at a feature and say, well, yes, yes, we can make it faster, but I think this is the wrong feature in the beginning. People are actually wanting this. And what if we made this button over here, then they could do this better. And those, those people are invaluable. Again, not every developer is that way, but... And that's why hiring is such a complicated thing. You can't just say, here's the criteria. These are people we want, these are people who don't, because different people have different strengths and, and balances. And that's where a good manager knows how to put those together. People often think that the manager's job is to get everyone to be really productive. No, the manager's job is to understand that they have a DPS, they have a tank, they have a stealth, they have, you know, magic user in the D&D world. They have the, all these people with different abilities. How do we stack them and put them together such that I create the best party or the best team going forward. <laughs>